In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create this amazing glow in the dark effect in Affinity Photo. My name is Rens, I'm a surreal digital artist from the Netherlands helping you create amazing photo manipulations in Affinity Photo. And if you love photo manipulation just as much as I do, I want to let you know that I just relaunched my free masterclass called The Power of Photo Manipulation in which I will share with you my three secrets to creating whatever you can imagine in the endless world of photo manipulation. You can find the link to the free masterclass down below in the description. Now, with that being said, let's jump right into Affinity Photo and let me show you how to create this amazing glow in the dark effect. All right, so we've jumped into Affinity Photo and this is the picture that I want to edit today. And the effect that I want to apply is the neon effect or the glow in the dark effect. Just depends on how you want to call it. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to crop the image or actually I want to resize the image so that we only have, let's say, the upper body of the module. So let's do that first. Let's select the right layer. Press V on the keyboard to select um, the move tool. We can zoom out a little bit by pressing command minus. And then I click and hold command to zoom or to scale from the center. And this is basically what I'm uh, looking for. Maybe a little smaller, maybe something like so. And this looks pretty cool to me. So uh, what I want to do next is um, I want to rasterize and trim it because I don't need all the excess pixels. Let's say what you can see if I press V. You can see that we've got all these pixels right around here and I don't really need them anymore. So I will right click on my layer and select rasterize and trim. And now you can see we got rid of all these excess pixels. All right, the second thing that I want to do is I want to darken the image a lot. So how to do this, select the right layer, go to your adjustment layers and select on exposure adjustment layer and simply click and drag the slider Far, far to the left. So let's say to something like so, somewhere about here. Now, if you want to create a night scene, and that is what I'm aiming for in this case, you want to make sure that you add some blue uh, tones to the image because otherwise it just simply doesn't really look like night. So if you look like this image right now, it's just like a darker daylight image, let's say. So let's add a new adjustment layer and this uh, you can add multiple adjustment layers. You can add a white balance or an HSL or whatever, but I'm going to go for recolor this time. And I'm going to select the color that I want to use to make the glasses glow. So I will go for some darker, um, let's say blue. So some nice blue color, something like this. And maybe darken the image even further. And maybe I'm going to adjust the opacity a little bit because otherwise it is too saturated maybe. Or I can just uh, use this slider to um, adjust the saturation. So maybe something like this looks pretty fine to me. So this was the before and this was the after. So what we've done until now. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a levels adjustment layer to play a little bit with the contrast. So I press command L on the keyboard, which is the keyboard shortcut for levels adjustment layer. And I'm gonna increase the brights a little bit, something like so, and maybe darken the shadows a little bit, just a touch, something like so. So this was the before and this was the after. All right, so now the fun part begins and the next thing that I want to do is I want to make a pen trace around the sunglasses. So I'm going to disable all these adjustment layers for now because these are just distracting for now. And I'm going to zoom in quite a lot and I'll be using my pen tool. So I press P on the keyboard and I select the model layer. Let's first uh, rename this model. Let's zoom in and I'm going to use the pen tool to trace the sunglasses. So let me start right here in the corner and I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. And I'm just going to use my time to uh, make a nice selection of these sunglasses. And if you didn't notice by, by now, like the pen tool is definitely the most accurate selection tool out on uh, in photo editing software so just like in photoshop or in affinity photo in this case the pen tool is gonna give you the most um, 
accurate result let's say so if you don't know how to use the pen tool yet you can check out my free mini course called the secrets to pixel perfect selections and in this free mini course you will learn eight powerful techniques that will help you make awesome selections in affinity photo for your photo manipulations or for any other project so make sure to spend some time on this because the better your selections are the better the end result will be So let's go ahead and skip this part because um, this is something I don't really need in my edit. So these, these nose bridges, let's say. So I'm going to skip these for now, something like so. And I'm just going to continue on the nose bridge or whatever this part is called. All right, so now we've actually closed our um, path, let's say. So now what I want to do is I want to fill this path with a certain color. And I'm going to pick the color that I want to use as my uh, neon glow, let's say. So I'm going to go to fill and I'm going to select some nice bright blue color, let's say. So something like... Or maybe we can go for another color this time because I always pick blue as a glow. So let's go for some nice green color. So let's say something like this. It's pretty fine to me. So let's click away. And now you can see the selection is filled with green. Now the next thing that I want to do and that is to cut out the sunglasses or the glasses actually of the sunglasses. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer a little bit and now I can see the frame of the sunglasses. So what I'm going to do now is uh, select my pen tool once again and I'm just going to make another uh, path or curve to select the, the lenses let's say. something like so and what we want to do let me just tweak this a little bit something like this and now what i want to do is instead of creating a mask i want to make a selection so i click on selection right there at the top and now i'm just going to click the mask icon so as you can see now i've masked out everything except the glass and this is something i don't want i want the opposite effect so i select the mask and i press command i on the keyboard and now you can see that we've masked out uh, the lens of, or the first lens of the sunglasses. So let's do the second one as well. So I'm just going to start any, at any random point. And we're just going to do the same thing for the second lens. Something like so. And the same thing again. We're going to hit selection. And now... I can select my mask and I just want to add this to my selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to fill uh, to edit. Sorry, I'm going to click on fill and then I want to select my secondary color, which is black in this case. So now you can see what we've basically done is we've made selections, two selections or two curves. Actually, we've converted them into selections and these selections we filled with black and now we've masked them out. So we've got this nice trace of our sunglasses right now. And now we can actually um, enable our uh, background or our adjustment layers again. And let's see if I show this one. And let me drag this to the top, of course. Now you can see we've got this nice um, green outline, let's say, of the sunglasses. So now the fun part begins, and that is to make this thing glow. Now, what I want to do first is I want to put this thing in a group. So I press command G to pr uh, put it in a group. And this is going to call, I'm going to call this group the glow in the dark group or something like this. And I'm going to uh, name this curve sunglasses. And I want to add my effects to the group. So I'm going to select the group layer and I'm going to go to my effects panel. And the first effect that I want to apply or that I want to yeah, apply, let's say, is an outer glow. So I'm going to go here to outer glow. I'm going to select a green color. So similar to the color that I have um, selected for my sunglasses in this case. And I'm going to increase the radius. So maybe something like 
this maybe play with the intensity a little bit to see if it, things look good and this looks about fine to me and uh, the second thing that i want to do is i want to add an inner glow so we're going to go to inner glow and this one i want to keep it white so i want to um click center right over here and I want to increase the radius just a little bit. So maybe something like four pixels or something. And we can play with the intensity, of course, as always. But I will keep it the intensity at about 56%. And of course, you can also play with the opacity. But I think in this case, the opacity looks pretty fine. I will keep it at 100% for now. And the third effect that I want to add to add this glow effect is an outer shadow. Now it looks kind of funny to add an outer shadow, but what we basically can do with an outer shadow is we can change the blend mode to screen. So when you click on outer shadow, as you can see right over here, the blend mode is set to multiply. But if we set the blend mode to screen, like so, and we're gonna add a green color again. So let me maybe just um select a green color right over here maybe and we will add the radius or increase the radius and the intensity you can see that we actually just get another glow so you can also use an outer shadow effect to apply extra glow to your um, composition let's say or to your photo manipulation now let's see what actually works pretty good and i think let's zoom out now an intensity of 81 or 80% 80 looks pretty cool to me and a radius of 100 pixels. Maybe we can play with the radius a little bit to see if we can make it look even better. But I think I like this effect quite a lot already. So let's keep it like it is. And that is the first part of this image. Now. A cool thing is because we've added these effects to the group, we can actually add something to the group and these effects will be applied to whatever we put inside of the group. So let's say we want to add um, her earring, which is right over here. We want to add some nice glow in the dark effect to the earring as well. Now, how to do this? It's basically the same thing. So I'm gonna grab my pen tool and I'm gonna trace the earrings. And I'm not gonna be too precise because it's gonna be too time consuming, but I will just make a rough selection or let's say a pen curve of her earring, let's say. So something like so, go around here. And I'm just, okay, let's just, make it as good as I can maybe or as quick as I can but a bit accurate all right so there we have our path let's say and now we basically want to do the same thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this with some green color and maybe we can just grab a green color from right over here so I'm just gonna click and drag my color picker and I'm gonna select this green color I'm gonna click on it once extra so that we uh, once again I should say so that we fill it with green and I'm gonna put this thing which you cannot see right now but right here it is I'm gonna put this thing inside of the group and let's see what happens if I put it inside of the group you can see that it also um, applies these effects to whatever I added to the group. So now we also have this nice earring with this nice glow. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to add some glow to the surroundings because now it's just like only the sunglasses and the earring are glowing. But of course, if something is glowing, there should be some ambient light as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new pixel layer. So I'm gonna click right over here and I'm gonna fill this pixel layer with um, with this green color. So how I actually did this, I have a keyboard shortcut um, uh, FN, let's say enter, but it's the same thing as if you go to edit and go to fill. And this is my keyboard shortcut. So I use this keyboard shortcut to fill my whole screen with this green color, let's say. 
And now the whole screen is green and of course I don't want this. So I'm going to go into my blend ranges and I'm going to make sure that all of this green is subtracted from the shadow. So I'm going to use my blend ranges for this and I'm going to drag this left one all the way down and I'm going to drag the right one to the left. So now you can see we actually add a lot of green to everything that is bright and everything that's dark. There is no green added to this area. So I'm going to drag this even further something like so and i want to make sure that this layer is below my sunglasses so i'm going to drag it below because otherwise you can see what happens uh, the sunglasses looks really really terrible so this is something i don't want so let me drag this below the sunglasses and now you can see that we've basically filled our whole screen with green now let me tweak this a little further maybe something like this and what I want to do now is I want to create a black layer mask. So we are actually hiding all these green pixels for now. And then we're going to use a white brush to paint them back in. So how to create a black layer mask, hold the Alt or Option key and click on the mask icon to create a black layer mask. And now once I um, select my layer mask and press B on the keyboard and press D to go to back to my default colors. Now with a low opacity and a low flow, like I've got 16% opacity and a 10% flow, I can brush in slowly but gradually, I can brush in um, the effect with a soft round brush. So I will just add a little bit of glow to the surroundings, let's say. So that it's more, that the glasses is more interacting with the model instead of just um, with itself, let's say. And now I can be as accurate as I want. I can add some nice glow to her nose, maybe some softer glow uh, around it. Of course, the bottom of the nose shouldn't be really lit up, but this part should be. So now we can basically just paint in all the areas where we want to add some glow. Something like this and maybe a little bit of glow her lips maybe a little bit to her nose and of course we can do the same for her ear so let's zoom in and let's just apply some glow to her ear maybe a little bit here and maybe a tiny little bit over here because we've got this glow going on right over here and basically we're just gonna paint in back some effect course at the bottom here as well her neck should be green a little bit something like this this starts to look pretty cool now the cool thing is because we've added this um, black layer mask we can also brush out the effect so let's say I've made this part let's say her nose I made it uh, too green I can simply press X on the keyboard to toggle between black and white now I have black as my back uh, as my foreground color and now I can simply paint in with black to um, to hide parts where I think I overdone uh, overdid the effect so maybe something like this looks better than it looked before all right now let's continue I want to add a little bit of green to her upper lip because I think there should be some green as well and maybe decrease the flow even more use a bigger brush and just brush in some overall green light something like this now i i think i think i overdid it a little bit so what i can do of course is i can reduce the opacity to see how that looks and that actually looks pretty cool however i think i've added way too much green right over here so let's go back into our layer mask let's select uh, black as a foreground color and let me just brush out some of these parts because this is way too much something like so now this looks pretty cool to me maybe add a little bit to her forehead so i'm gonna press x to select my white color again and now i've added a little bit to her forehead and maybe i want to add some glow to her clothes as well so let's zoom in a little bit and let's just brush in with white and just brush in a tiny little bit of this green um, highlights let's say and the great thing is that because we um, we've we are working on a layer with a, a blend ranges let's say so if I select the right layer you can see that 
we've got these blend ranges active so i can basically not paint any green in the shadow parts so if i would disable this uh, blend ranges it would look like this and now you can see that we are actually just fading out the shadows but because we have these blend ranges active you can see that we cannot really fade out the shadows and things look way more realistic than um, without these blend ranges so let's continue and let's add some a tiny bit of green to our clothes as well and i think i've overdone it a little bit too much again so i'm just gonna zoom out i'm gonna press x and i'm just gonna brush out the effect and maybe just brush in and paint in until i like it so maybe This looks pretty fine to me. All right, so this looks pretty cool to me actually. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a little bit more light to her face and we're basically gonna do this the same way as we've uh, applied this overall glow. So I'm gonna create a new um, Pixel layer, I'm gonna name this one, let's say uh, glow light first. And the second one is also gonna be a glow light, but let's say uh, focused glow light or something. And I want to select white as a foreground color or maybe some very bright green. So let's say almost white, but there is some green inside. So let's some choose for something like this. And I'm basically gonna do the same thing. So make sure it's below our glow in the dark layer. I'm gonna increase the brush size and I'm gonna increase the opacity as well. So we get this uh, brighter blob, let's say. Maybe I can increase the hardness a little bit. Something like so. And I'm gonna click once on this lens and I'm gonna click once more on this lens. So maybe something like this. And it looks kind of strange at this point, uh, at this moment in time, but we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna add blend ranges again, and I'm gonna drag down the um, shadows, and I'm gonna move the, sh the the highlights to the left. And now you can see we get this really, really nice, realistic looking light effect. Let's say so we can do the same here near the earring. So I can just click once. Or maybe brush it in slowly. Maybe that's better for this part. I can just use a low flow and a low opacity to kind of do the same effect right over here to get this extra nice glow, let's say. So let me zoom out and let's see the before. This is the before and this is the after. So this looks pretty, pretty amazing to me. Let's um, add this, this, this uh, glow as well to the temple of the sunglasses so something like so and well i think this looks super amazing so let me show you the before um i'm gonna select my create a copy of my model and i'm gonna drag it all the way to the top and this is the before so before we've applied anything and this is the after now i think the effect is way too strong so I can reduce the opacity and go for more subtle changes or something like this. And I think this looks really, really good. And that beautiful people is how to create this amazing glow in the dark effect in Affinity Photo. Now, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I've done recording it. And as mentioned before, if you want to learn more photo manipulation for free, I highly recommend you to check out my free masterclass called The Power of Photo Manipulation, in which I will share with you my three secrets to create whatever you can imagine in the endless world of photo manipulation. All right, that being said, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy my overall content, feel very, very free to subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me. Then I hope to see you in my next video right here. If you want to learn more about Glow in Affinity Photo or check out this video right here. All right, see you in my next video. Ciao.